Hi, everyone. We are really happy to be here today. Um, this is our first global conference. Hi, Raman. How are you feeling? Hey, Kim. How's everything? All good? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Um, so we are today going to be giving you a bit of a few tips regarding how to set up a successful student ambassador scheme. Um, we do have some slides, so let me get them ready for you. Brilliant. I hope it's nice and early for everyone attending and joining us here today as well. It's still dark outside, so I'm using terrible lighting, which I do apologize, but that's all I can work with right now. Same here, same here. Um, so I guess we are ready to start. So again, welcome to our Unibody 2020 Global Conference. If you wanna share about it on social media today, please make sure that you use our hashtag for our great event, um, hashtag Unibody 2020, and please give us some feedbacks. Um, so Roman, how about you introduce yourself really quickly? Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, sure. so uh, don't know what just happened there. So I'm, I'm, I'm one of the university partnership managers here at Unibody. So I work directly with the universities to help you, um, understand more about the platform, um, as well as, uh, basically get to the nitty gritty part of uh, establishing a partnership in the first place. Uh, prior to working at Unibody, I've been working with education technology firms and I specialize in the Middle East and North Africa region. I myself uh, uh, used to be an international student, which really struggled with actually understanding where I wanted to be, what I wanted to do. And this is one of the main reasons which has really attracted me to the mission of Unibody is just making sure that other students in the future don't need to have this struggle going forward. And um, I am Kim Hayaker. I am a university partnership executive here at Unibody. Just like Roman, I was also an international student, so I totally understand the struggle. Um, I was also a student ambassador, so I'm hoping that today I can give you a bit, uh, um, some few insider tips as to the ambassador view of what a student ambassador scheme should be. Um, and here at Unibody, I work really closely with the Southeast Asian regions, as well as the MENA region with you, Roman. Um, so the plan for today, we're going to go through the three staples um, to starting up a student scheme, um, student ambassador scheme, sorry. We'll also look a little bit into the training you should give to your student ambassadors and some goodies to make sure that they stay motivated. We'll also be talking about potentially using alumni as student ambassadors. And then once you have the ball rolling, you want to make sure that you constantly have a flow of student ambassadors, so how to keep the recruitment going. And then we'll keep a few minutes for some Q&A if you guys have any questions. Um, also during this session, if you wanna ask any questions, Raman will be monitoring the feed. So um, Raman will make sure to raise it up for us if there is anything that um, you wanna ask us. Yeah, and we really want to try to keep this as informal uh, as possible. And we really uh, don't just want to uh, talk to you for pretty much 45 minutes. So please, if you do have any questions, any concerns, any comments, really, um, do uh, um, put them into the chat. We always like to respond to questions and, and keep this more of a open dialogue, really because nobody li likes to be lectured to for 45 minutes, to be honest. No, I mean, this is a workshop and you guys are university professionals. So, you know, a workshop is supposed to be interactive. Yeah. Um, so I guess we can start with what are the three key things to consider when setting up a student ambassador scheme? Now, Roman, I seem to remember that you also did some open days when you were at university mm -hmm. and things like that. What do you think are the three key things? You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> um, one of the main things that I think is really important is making sure that you start off with a, a set of students that you really, really trust. A diverse set of um, individuals which you would have probably 
reached out anyway if we if you were to have things like open days or career fairs you know those really eager bright students um, I definitely was not one of them so I was never asked to attend any of these um, I wasn't I'm, I'm sorry uh, but yeah diversity uh, number one is key because especially if you're trying to attract as many different students as possible or if you're trying to attract a certain demographic or certain socioeconomic background of students then it's really important to represent them in your in your uh, program so I think having a diverse set of students coming from different backgrounds, studying different subjects, or even having them uh, at different stages of their academic cycle, i.e. have some undergraduates, have some postgraduates, perhaps even some alumni, uh, that will be your uh, biggest uh, friend. Yeah, I mean, you're totally, totally on the point here. Um, so the three staples that we tend to advise our partners to have when we're setting when we're helping them set up successful schemes is definitely diversity it's trust in your student ambassadors and finally confidence and we'll talk a little bit about each of the, those um in the upcoming minutes yeah. um so yeah when talking about diversity as raman said one thing that is really important is um to have their uh, bodies that really represent, you know, every single one of your students. So you'll want some people from different courses and programs. You'll want people from different countries, backgrounds, gender. And it's okay to start small. Um, uh, one of the questions that a lot of the partners ask me when I work with them, and I'm sure Raman, you're in the same position, it's how many ambassadors should we start with? And honestly, even if you start with 10, as long as they represent a variety of uh, people, that's more than enough. Um, now, where do you start looking for them? You have started to actually touch on that point, Raman, earlier. Um, so as you were saying, some course reps, uh, maybe some of the students that you know your marketing team has been working with when working on student testimonials, um, and maybe some scholarship recipients, right, Roman? I mean... Yeah, definitely. So um, going into each of these points a bit more uh, deeply, uh, really ma ma making sure that you can tick off as many boxes um, when it comes to, that, to diversity, like we said, it's going to be your biggest friend. And um, yeah, starting off small is really, really important. Just starting out with a group of students that you really trust to kind of grow this fundamental group. I work with a lot of uh, very, very small institutions in the Middle East, uh, institutions that only have maybe up to 500 actually students enrolled uh, throughout the entire year. So with those institutions, we even advise go even smaller, start with maybe six to eight students from uh, different backgrounds and different subjects. And yeah, as Kim said, the best way to really interact with these students is finding out which are usually those students that are very eager to help students that maybe want to work on their CV a bit. This is something that looks fantastic on uh, any student's uh, CV. So really making sure to, to, to promote that as well. And when it comes to uh, scholarships, a lot of the institutions that we work with, they do this fantastic thing where uh, they actually make it a criteria to be a, a unibody ambassador to be eligible for any sort of scholarships. So of course you have your other requirements such as perhaps your GPA or what grade did you get? Uh, perhaps it's one of your requirements is being from a certain socioeconomic background, whatever it may be. But within that bullet point list, one of the other lists is you would also need to uh, agree to be a unibody ambassador. And uh, this works uh, really, really well, especially if you're trying to get more international students to become unibody am ambassadors, because usually those are the sort of students that you usually look at these uh, these sorts of scholarships or perhaps even postgraduates, which have finished their three years. Now they are a bit more focused on, on what, what, more specifically where they want to go, what they want to do. And uh, this is a really powerful way to get them involved as well. Definitely. Uh, so that 
actually deals with the aspect of diversity. And we saw that our two other staples were trust and confidence. Um, and you also touched upon that earlier, but so yep. do you want to tell us a bit more about it? <laughs> Sure. Uh, when it comes to, I guess, when it comes to trusting your ambassadors, one of the things that we have to remember is that these are young adults. These are these are not children. And as adults, none of us like to be micromanaged, <laughs> to put it very, very simply. Um, so this is why it's important that when you start out with your ambassador program, that you choose those students that you're 100% comfortable with, students that you don't have to look after 24 seven, students that you know that after having a couple of training sessions with them, that you can give them full confidence to essentially drive the car. And um, the reason why this is so important is not only does it create, um, not only does it create confidence as uh, this, the second point on this slide shows, but it also um, sets a very strong foundation for your future program to come because what the uh, ambassador will do, they will share their positive experience of being an ambassador and how much uh, free uh, work they were able to do and the fact that they were able to do so not, uh, autonomously. And uh, with that, they're going to share those experiences to their friends or perhaps other um, students in uh, younger year groups. So organically, what you're also going to do by giving trust to your ambassadors is actually helping your ambassador scheme grow in the long term. But yeah, like we said, no one really likes to be micromanaged. This is why uh, we we make sure here at Unibody or uh, that we really train up all of your ambassadors as well, or perhaps you have your own training sessions with am am ambassadors on how to handle certain situations. Now, of course, there's gonna be some situations where a student might not be the right person to answer. And we understand that whether it would be questions specific to certain scholarships, to uh, certain careers, or perhaps it's, it's a very sensitive subject. In those situations, we always recommend that the uh, ambassador always directs this uh, question or this query to the appropriate member of staff. But nine times out of 10, when it's just a question about what is it like living in a certain country? What is it like uh, studying? Or how do you uh, balance uh, work and life? Do you have a part-time job? Those sort of everyday questions we, we really see uh, that when you give your ambassadors a bit of uh, freeway, that they're really able to authentically um, connect with your prospective students and create that community feel. Um, again, providing that confidence factor in your ambassadors program, but also more importantly, in your institution. I went on a little bit of a ramble there. Uh, <laughs> Kim, do you have anything to uh, add to that? Um yeah, I mean, definitely on the confidence side, you know, as a student ambassador myself, before I gave my first tour during an open day, I would never have thought I would be able to give a 45 minutes tour to groups of sometimes up to 50 people. Um, and it, it just it just really helped me gain some confidence in myself. And I see that even today, um, I still use it. It's such, as a student ambassador, you know, you're, you gain so many transferable skills that um, this is something you wanna really make them understand, especially when you're trying to recruit them, um, which again, wraps pretty well into our next point, which is how do you get the word out there? Because we're still all about setting up that scheme. You might have one right now, but some of you might not. So we do wanna, discuss that point a little bit. Um, our great partner, the University of Glasgow, um, and pretty uh, actually from the University of Glasgow, which I would really like um, to thank because she actually took the time to sit down with me and had a chat about how she set up our Unibody program, um, shared that really nice leaflet with us on how she has been able to recruit her student ambassadors. Um, so the University of Glasgow have a recruitment and resource pages. Um, actually, Unibody also shared their own with you if that's something that you feel like you might need a bit of help. Um, 
you know, it is, you can have your own internal one and then you can add some tips and stuff from our own as well. And, you know, launching some promo as to how to engage students in their ambassador schemes is always great. I know that when I was recruited as a student ambassador, I first found out about positions um, at the student union society sphere, but, you know, other people found out in different ways. Um, how did you find out, Roman, when you were a student ambassador? Um, yeah, so um, they asked um, essentially mm -hmm. all of the people that uh, attended and helped out during open days. Um, if mm -hmm. Well, they asked the right people if they wanted to <laughs> uh, become am am ambassadors. But yeah, really getting the word out there. So using multiple different channels that you have internally, whether it's your university portal, whether you have um, a couple of students helping you to create things like posters and leaflets that you can scatter around the campus. Definitely having it at um, events where you usually have a lot of students gathering uh, something like a society fair or something like um, I remember when I was at King's um, I saw a poster at our uh, annual varsity which is like our annual uh, sports competition with a rival university so we would be like in a stadium just like screaming at, at each other but there would still be posters there just because <laughs> they knew that there's going to be a, lo a lot of students there. So yeah, definitely trying out multiple different uh, channels and avenues. Use your social media channels. Your students are very likely to also follow your social media channels, you know, your Twitters, your LinkedIn's, your Instagram's. Um, use that to your advantage, especially considering the fact those are going to be the channels most often used by your students. And one of the things that is really amazing and that we find here at Unibody is that over time you are actually um, when you set this up properly and well and well structured and 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 you cover those points that we talked about you know creating that sense of community creating that trust and and, and that confidence with your students is that organically over the, over the next couple two three years or so you're actually going to not need to advertise for the position anymore at all, because a lot of the students, they would have heard about the uh, opportunity to become ambassadors. They're going to understand the benefits of it. You know, it looks great on your CV. You know, you you might um, um, do some fun things with the students after, which we're going, which Kim and I, we're also going to talk about in just a second. But organically what happens, it goes from as a matter of recruiting for the job to getting a lot of applications because it's something that looks fun. It's something that students want to do. And I can relate to that because my younger sister, she's currently at Royal Holloway in her second year. And, and uh, I know that I, uh, I uh, told her about the opportunity of becoming something like a unibody, unibody ambassador. And she said, oh, this sounds amazing. She got back to me like a couple of days after saying that they have literally uh, tens, uh, if not hundreds of actually applications now. So they, they actually don't advertise it for, for it anymore because it's so popular. And this is something that we often see a lot is that when, when you start out with a small group and you advertise it well, it organically grows to the point where you're going to have just lots of amazing students uh, wanting to become part of this. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. And if your sister needs any tips, let me know because Royal Holloway is my alma mater where I was also a student ambassador. <laughs> so <laughs> now that you have your buddies, what do you do with them, Raman? You throw a big party. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Definitely <laughs> more likely at the end of the year. Um, yeah, and right now, Thing. please be careful people yeah but no you have to train them so um as we said earlier uh unibody does have pages for resources and things like that and we actually also um run fortnightly trainings for new buddies on you know things like how to use the platform but also how to be simply a good ambassadors um you can have your own as well obviously because you know you want to make sure that you 
um, have whatever makes your university special come out when they're chatting with your students and stuff like that. I mean, I remember when I, I, I I'm pretty sure I can still do the tour. I'm pretty sure if I if I were to go back to Raw Holloway and start where this tour started, pretty sure I could still explain to everyone all the fun facts about Raw Holloway. Um, because it's something that becomes ingrained in you through training and practice, obviously, but also because it's fun. It's so much, it was so much fun, I remember. Um, any potential points on training for you, Roman? Yeah, when, when it comes to training, I wouldn't overthink it. Like we said, these are uh, smart young adults that we're talking about. And um, most of them will know that they're going to need to represent your institution a certain way whilst keeping things as uh, what we recommend as authentic as possible. So um, like Kim said, there are a number of things that we can help with when, when it comes to training. Like we already have um, lots of different PDF documents, best, best practice advice that you can use, share out with your, um, with your ambassadors or incorporate that in your own training. Um, so all of those things uh, would be covered by us as well. Definitely. But now we get to the fun part. <laughs> this, this was really my favorite part as an ambassador. Oh, yeah. um, the goodies. So one of the questions we get all the time is, do we have to pay our ambassadors? And no, you don't. Um, they can be volunteers, but you do have to sweeten the pot a bit. <laughs> um, so running some socials and events for them. Obviously right now, remotely, it might be a bit different, um, but you know, some of our partners have gotten back to us saying, oh, we organized a Zoom bingo or a Netflix watch party and other things like that, which I think is great. You know, seeing the creativity of people that run student ambassador schemes to, so that they can make sure that their ambassadors still feel rewarded for their hard work. Um, that reward doesn't have to be monetary. It can very well be something simple like socials and events or awards and merch. Um, I still have my Unibody hoodie, although it is a very, very bright orange color. So I don't wear it anywhere else than inside the house. I'm not going to lie. It just doesn't, doesn't suit me. <laughs> um, but yeah, what um, any other... Yeah, um, the, events as well. Yeah, Go I ahead. Think, sorry. That's no, totally fine. I think the most important thing that we need to remember with the socials and the events is is uh, the fact that by by involving these individuals, you've created the sense of com community, this this sense of camaraderie, and these are now a group of students that. Um, would have uh, probably worked together at some point they would have probably befriended each other so doing anything socially with them um, is always going to be a big plus and this is one of the things that you can use to when you've initially advertise uh, the, the uh, role itself so uh, like uh, Kim said um, you can have uh, many different digital events hopefully when we go back to quote unquote the norm and we can uh, do physical events again, you know, then get really get creative, get students excited, um, get them out perhaps on a day trip somewhere, or perhaps go camping, go bowling, go paintballing, you know, whatever it is, just make sure that it's fun, that it gets people involved. And um, one of the things that I always find uh, with students is that if you give them a choice or if you involve them in the decision making, i.e. what would you guys want to do? Here's a list of different things that we thought about. Um, if you guys want to choose something or if you want, or if you guys want to suggest something else, um, that usually really helps as well. So really um, focusing on the fact that uh, this is a now a community of students which um which we're, which can also be part of this decision making process so don't put so much pressure on yourself if you don't know what you want to do send out a quick survey uh, for example all right guys it's the netflix watch party what do we want to watch today i don't know just yeah getting them in in, in involved usually works really well Definitely. Um, and I know that as a student ambassador, one of the things 
I was the most grateful of um, was some of the perks we, we got with the careers events. So we had some special events with the careers center where we, um, you know, we had some one-on-one -on -one time with career advisors on how to use our position as a student ambassador the best way on our CVs. Um, you know, we had uh, some special um, time slots where that we could book, where we could go over cover letters, you know, just a way to thank your students for their time and efforts and, and just, you know, make it valuable. Again, as we said earlier, it doesn't have to be monetary, um, but you do want to motivate them. And yeah, it's really great to have some fun, but sometimes the careers center can be your best friend on how to make a student ambassador scheme very powerful. I definitely agree on that one. And it's actually quite interesting. Um, if you actually jump on LinkedIn, and you actually uh, check out your, your uni body. It actually looks like we have like 3,000 employees, but it's not, but it's actually uh, e uh, eager um, students actually are able to put down on their LinkedIn profile that they're, uni that they're uni body ambassadors. And already they're able to establish their own personal brand on LinkedIn and uh, really start that, uh, start looking good in front, in front of future employers or internships that they're really starting to think about that as well. So this is something that they're also able to do and often very excited about. Yeah, definitely. It was really confusing when I first joined uni, but I was like, wait, it's less than a hundred of us in the office. What happened? <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> so graduation time. It's not the end for your ambassadors. And this is something that we really are trying to push for people to understand is that, you know, you can use alumni as well as ambassadors, either if they were previous ambassadors before graduating, or even if they were never ambassadors um, before they joined the program. And one of the thing that is great about alumni as buddies, um, you know, especially for graduate programs, for example, I know that here for in Europe, um, graduate a lot of graduate programs tend to be only a year long and they're very intensive programs. Yeah. So for example, then you might not want to take some time out of um, your students um, experience, especially as well, because, you know, by the time they start their the year at your program uh, will pretty much be the time you need them on the platform. So they won't really have had that experience that you want them to be able to share with your prospects. So using alumni can be a great way to, to circumvent that issue. Um, yeah. I, I think with mm -hmm. alumni as well, what's, what's really powerful is the fact that those are uh, um, people that finish the entire experience so, so they can provide more of a 360 um, 360 point of view on um, any sort of question that um, a prospective students might have and, and how that uh, question might um, change over the three or four, three, four, five years that, that they're studying at your institution. And we know from speaking and from working with so many alumni that um, you know there are many alumni um, in many institutions that want to give back to your institution. You know some some alumni are happy to just write a check maybe once a year and just not be contacted and then sayonara. But um, some other uh, but but there's so many al alumni that actually want to get more in, in, in involved and and we hear hear about these stories on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is really when uh, you can get your alumni involved in your ambassador program. And we, we know just by looking at, at the numbers, so that alumni <laughs> are often, um, are often contacted by students that are a bit more ROI focused. So for example, if you're looking at your business students, if you're looking at your uh, postgraduates, you know, the students that, that usually have a very good idea about what they want to get out of a course and what and how they want that course to help them career wise. This is really where your alumni would have the biggest um, impact from what we've seen, as well as being able to help your everyday students as well. 
Yeah, I mean, I had the chance to sit down and have a chat with Hoan from uh, the Barcelona Graduate School of Economics uh, preparing this presentation. And he, he truly said that he was incredibly thankful and but also surprised at how um, willing the alumni were when, you know, he first contacted people and he wasn't expecting the positive answer he got when he tried to contact some um, alumni and ask them to be um, uh, buddies on the platform. And as, as Raman said, you know, alumni do have a bit of a different a view of how things happened you know now they have a bit of um they're a bit um they're able to recollect what happened uh when they were at university and and give different aspect different accounts of their experience to the to your students it's just you know it's a it's a great um it, it's really truly a, a great resource that you might want to be considering and you don't have to just be a graduate program to be considering using alumni you can really um just have any type of program they they'll they'll probably be willing to help but again you might not want to have just alumni not um and sometimes you know and as we said your current student will graduate eventually. And so how do you keep the, roll, the ball rolling? Um, one of the best way really is probably actually referral from ambassadors that are about to leave. Um, I know that that's one of the things I did when I came at the end of my third year. Um, I talked to one of the people working, uh, you know, managing the student ambassador scheme. And I told them, hey, I have that friend. She is in second year, and I think she would be a great ambassador. Um, you know, she's really uh, confident. She's really bubbly, but she's also someone that I trust because she's hardworking. And it was just, it was great to be able to see someone then take the mental type of thing. Um, you might also want to consider increasing the recruitment of ambassadors, uh, depending on the markets that you're, you know, trying to attract to your universities. So um, let's say if you're starting to look at recruiting somewhere like um, Nigeria, I know that quite a few of our partners, for example, in Malaysia are looking to do that. Um, they already have some current students that are from Nigeria. And what they did is that they actually contacted those students and told them, hey, are you interested to be in the platform? Because we're really looking to get more of um, your, uh, your co-countrymen and women. And we would love if you would be able to, you know, just be on the platform and help her, or help them uh, be reassured of how amazing it is to come to um, our university. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, at the end of the day, we all know that your current students are your strongest marketing tool. So if if, uh, if there are any demographics or any particular nationalities uh, that you're trying to uh, get more uh, interaction with, and if you know that you have a few students from that particular background, using them will probably, if not most likely, give you the most bang for your buck, essentially. Because I students always want to speak to different students want to learn from their experiences regardless whether it's overseas or whether it's domestic and if you're trying to increase traction from uh like we said certain markets that are not doing well or perhaps even some of your programs that are not performing as good as as some others then we really recommend is um having students from that are currently uh, from that background or are studying this particular course that is not doing so well and giving prospective students the opportunity to speak to them, um, answer their questions, give them the confidence that, that they need and actually therefore uh, hopefully lead to uh, better results in the long term uh, for your institution as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and also, maybe you want to be sending um, 
you know, once a student has accepted um, an offer, maybe sending them an email, introducing the idea of being a Unibody ambassador, it doesn't have to be from their first year. Um, again, if you're running a, a graduate program, that might be one of the solution you're still considering, you know, um, but there are always ways to, to keep, you know, being able to recruit students. And as we said earlier, having a stall at the students' fair, um, most of the time at the student union you know, society is always something great. Um, and also something that is not on the slide, but I found was actually a good way to do it was just have your own student ambassador tell your prospect, hey, you know what, like I've given you tips and I've helped you. So, you know, when it's your time to be a student, how about you become, become a student ambassador and, you know, share the love, <laughs> do what I did for you. Yeah, I love that. And definitely just like spreading it as many different channels and avenues as you possibly can, especially at those starting phases. Cause like we talked about, um, towards like when when your when your ambassador program is a bit more robust a bit more fleshed out you're going to get tons of applications anyway but setting those foundations at the start is, is really so important so like we talked about use your social media channels uh print out lo loads of like posters or uh, maybe business car business cards and stuff like that like a lot of our uh, partners they actually um give their ambassadors a um body business cards that they're actually able to give out to prospective students. So let's say you have like an open day and uh, then after a quick conversation with one of your ambassadors, they actually give you a, a business card with the link of their profile. <laughs> so those little things really just help to legitimize your, um, your uh, ambassador program, making it feel like, okay, this is definitely something cool. Like I'll, I'll like I didn't have a business card when I was 19. Um, no, yeah, those, yeah, exactly. So like those small little things and just really getting creative with it is really how you, how you can attract the, the best candidates, really. That's amazing. Um, Roman, do you want to, you know, kind of give us a, a bit of a key takeaways? Yeah, Sorry. definitely. Very, very happy to. I think the most important thing is when you're thinking about setting up an ambassador scheme is you need to, first of all, um, try to select a group of students, a, a, a smaller number of initial students that you are confident with are going to uh, represent your institution well, but they're also diverse enough to attract um, a, a, a large pool of uh, prospective students. And this can include uh, things like gender, country, what courses they are interested in, what societies they're part of, et cetera, et cetera. And once you have that small group of students that um, are kind of like your core group, then what happens uh, over the years that can grow with more people applying or you recruiting. Some of our partners, what they do, which is actually fantastic is um, that those initial core groups over the years, they become like ambassador leaders. So they actually end up training uh, the new ambassadors as well. So it really gives them like, again, that sense of, okay, this is, I'm part of something bigger here. So one of our partners in the UK, they, they, they do this um, amazingly where after one year of being a, a unibody ambassador, you become an ambassador leader and then you take part in, in the training and the explanation and uh, really making it feel a lot more robust as well. And when it comes to advertising for the role, use as many different channels like we talked about as possible. Um, it's, it's, it's one of those situations where you're going to have to try many different things and see what sticks for you. With some of our partners, social media work the best. Some of our partners, advertising at a physical events work best. Some of our partners email uh, promotion work best. So you're gonna have to do a bit of trial and error here just to see what really sticks well with your institution. And then what's also really important is creating that sense of community. 
when you create that sense of community with your ambassadors, you create that level of trust and that level of engagement, which is most authentic. And that enables not just your ambassadors to give the best advice possible, but it also creates a positive environment where your ambassadors can self-promote the ambassador scheme with their friends, with younger students as well. And then organically over the years, like we talked about, this is going to grow, especially if you did those as uh, far, uh, far, if you set those foundations right at the beginning, then you're going to have more people applying, you're actually going to need to be quite selective, and you, and you might be in a situation where you even get hundreds of applications to become an ambassador uh, from different students. So you, so you can start thinking about things a lot more strategically. So now you have the opportunity perhaps to even think about, okay, so this year's applications, we really want to um, in, in, increase our exposure to female Southeast Asian students. So then when I get those applications, I can be, I can be a bit more strategic. Okay, we need to represent this group or this course a bit better. So this is something that you can also expect over the years. And how to keep your students engaged. Uh, some institutions in, in, in initially want to pay their, uh, their student ambassadors for the work that they're doing. So that's all up to you. However, you don't have to, like we talked about, uh, just make sure that you do reward them in, to some extent, whether it's um, events that you organize together, whether you have like a little fun award ceremonies at the end of the year, like ambassador of the year, uh, things like that. They are all, always really fun going out for meals and stuff like that is, all, is all, all, always really, really important as well. And like uh, Kim all talked about, um, how, creating a strong relationship with your careers department is going to also be your best friend. Because at the end of the day, they, these students, they're also always going to think about how is this going to help me long term? How is this going to look on my CV? How is this going to help me look more competitive in a very competitive job market? So working with your careers department, thinking about different sessions that you can have exclusively for your ambassadors is also going to uh, help you. And this is really where Unibody comes in and shines as well, is because on the platform, not only are your uh, students able to uh, speak with prospective students, but, you, but you're going to have full transparency over all of the conversations that are happening, how much time your students are spending on the platform. So for example, if I see that there's a new ambassador that may need a little bit of extra help, I have full transparency in seeing that and we can provide that help for them as well. So again, I went on a bit of a rant there, but those would be, <laughs> those would be my main points. That's all right. Um, do we have any questions maybe? Cool, let me quickly check the feed. <clears throat> I don't see, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see. I don't see, I don't see. Oh, hello. I don't see any uh, questions, but I like the hashtag Ram and Rant. That is <laughs> definitely. Um, but we do love a good Ram and Rant. Now, I do want to thank Raman though, because normally this session was supposed to be with our colleague Keris, but she felt sick yesterday and wasn't able to come and join us. But Raman, the superhero that is, just stepped in and we worked through it yesterday all together and um it was just great thank you so much raman um nice. if you have any further questions feel free to email myself um kim.hayeker at unibody.com um you can also email karis uh karis uh, built cliff at unibody.com or you can also email raman uh, Raman Rebuar <laughs> at unibody.com. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope you're going to have a fa fa fantastic rest of the conference. There's lots of exciting workshops going on. Uh, later, actually, in the day, uh, I'm going to have a session 
uh, speaking more specifically with uh, one of our newer partners um, and how they have actually set up the uh, ambassador program as well. Um, oh, we can see Jamie asked two questions. Okay, let's have a quick look. Ooh, okay. Um, in COVID times, recruiting on campus can be hard. Post won't be working. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the questions uh, that was asked was, do you have any advice to um, recruit students currently with, with there being a lack of um, physical presence in campuses and stuff like that? And yeah, what it, these are definitely um, harder times to not just recruit ambassadors, but just to interact with uh, current and prospective students. And uh, definitely your social media channels are going to be one of your best friends. Uh, many of our partners, what they do is that they uh, advertise uh, this role in the uh, LinkedIn post. So they have the current ambassadors actually write many testimonials about what it was like being an ambassador, the experience that they got from it, and they're actually posting it on their Instagram stories or they're, or they're dedicating whole posts to it. Similar thing with uh, Facebook and Twitter. Um, Good old email, it's never gonna go away. So uh, definitely having a structured email cadence um, to uh, attract uh, new ambassadors. So maybe having free three to five emails going out over the course of, I don't know, three months or so, trying to attract students, really highlighting the, the key benefits for them and the value that they would get from it. Um, really em em emphasizing that sense of community, the fact that it's going to look great on your CV, the little extra perks that, that you guys might want to throw in, such as um, uh, having these uh, career sessions, working closer perhaps with your alumni maybe, so whatever uh, extra perks you're willing to throw in. And um, if you have an internal portal where you send messages through, then we also definitely recommend to do that as well. Uh, Kim, do you have any uh, other pointers? Well, also just, you know, telling your student ambassadors to tell their friends. Um, in When I was in second year, I lived with seven other people and out of the seven of us by third year it was actually um six of us that were student ambassadors um even though we started at only two of us we just motivated everyone and we were like it's fun you know and you get some great perks out of it it's just a great way to to get people and right now your students you might not feel like they're really connected to one another, but they are actually really connected right now. They are keeping in touch because it's their friends and it's the only way for them to keep having that social interaction. Um, and so by, by just asking your student ambassadors to, to share that, um, that the position opening is a good idea. It's a good thing. Definitely. And a follow-up question to that was um, any tips on getting alumni members to actually um, become you uh, become ambassadors and this is a key question and concern and struggle that we hear from actually a lot of our institutions is how do we get the older students or uh, older students should I say um, the alumni members to actually become part of this and um, for a lot of institutions the, the 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 main fear here is the fact that most of the alumni uh, they're going they're going to be working uh, full-time jobs they're not going to have time to do this it's gonna it's it's gonna take too too much time and resources from the day to actually do this but actually just by speaking with so many different alumni members we actually found out that um this is actually something that they want to do. And this is something that surprises a lot of institutions. A lot of alumni members want to help out the institution where they studied and where they graduated. And this doesn't just mean writing a check. 
uh, they want to interact and, and help you uh, represent the institution, giving advice and speaking with current and prospective students. So uh, one of the main things that is important is yes, they are working. So what, what are some of the ways that we can make this um, as little time consuming as possible? So having something like a, um, like a calendar ready of the key dates when we would need your day or the key events. On Unibody, uh, we have an app that uh, enables ambassadors and alumni members to respond to any queries. So actually it doesn't take up any time of the day because they can actually answer queries um, whilst they're having breakfast, whilst they are in an Uber to the next meeting, or perhaps um, for you, some of your older students in between classes. So it literally takes up the same amount of time it would take them to respond like a family member or a friend but what they're actually doing is actually giving um, important pieces of advice and through the Unibody app, it's very seamless, it's, it happens instantly. And actually looking at, at, at the stats, um, ambassadors, including alumni, actually spent less than an hour per week responding to um, queries. And this includes queries uh, sent to alumni as well. But in uh, other ways that you, that you can help uh, attract them other than just removing the fear of this is going to take up a, a lot of time is um, you can also go down the scholarship avenue or perhaps a discount avenue. A lot of the institutions that I work with in the Middle East, uh, one of the things that they do is that if a alumni member uh, actually becomes an ambassador, they are actually offered like a slight discount or some sort of a scholarship or some sort of incentive to study another course. Um, another thing that they do is that um, these alumni members, um, often what they like to do is um, uh, not just represent uh, themselves, but also they like to represent now the company that they work for. So uh, giving them allocated slots during things like career days and stuff like that. This is something that um, a lot of institutions are doing as well. Um, Kim, is there anything that you had in mind that perhaps could help attracting perhaps alumni? Um, I think one of the things that is actually in from my conversation with some people such as um, Juan from the Barcelona Graduate School of Economics is really that you might be surprised. It's so just take the leap. I know it sounds really, really weird, but actually you might be surprised. As Raman said, most alumni don't just want to write you a check. They, want, they enjoyed their time at your institution so much that they, they want to keep having that feeling of being part of the community. And right now, what you're probably offering them to ha still have that feeling is, you know, to get together every other year or something like that. But by offering them the, the possibility of talking to prospects, they actually feel like they're building up that community. It's really an idea of, I'm talking to the next generation, right? And and it's so rewarding that, as, as Rowan said, it was incredibly surprised about the amount of people that were willing to do it. And there's also the fact that, you know, even if at one point it gets a bit too much because someone may have a very big project coming up or, you know, maybe a baby on the way or something like that. It's actually um, very easy on the Unibody platform to take someone out of the platform for maybe even just a week or a couple of weeks, you know, if they send you an email and say, hey, I'm actually going to be on holiday. I've been working like 50 hours a week for the past four months. I just need some time off, right? Completely off, including off Unibody. You just go on the dashboard, click them out and that's it. So- Exactly. Yeah. And I think with your older ambassadors and alumni, it's just, you're gonna need to be a bit more flexible. That's just the way it is They They have, other uh, things that they need to take care of. So really just making sure that you're also a little bit more flexible with these guys. is also uh, definitely gonna help you in the long run. And I think we are running out of time now. And- I think it works. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. So again, thanks everyone for joining the session here today. And thanks for everyone who's asked the questions. Um, 
like Kim said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Any of us, our info uh, will, will, will be shared by the end of the day. And if you would like to hear some uh, more um, stories about um, how to set up an ambassador program later in the day, uh, I'm actually going to be interviewing Northwestern Qatar, and we're going to talk about how they set up their ambassador programs and how they actually uh, set up Unibody to become a core part of this ambassador program. So if you're interested in finding out how one of our partners has recently integrated the platform with their um, ambassador program, then feel free to join that as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Rahman.